Good morning folks, Steve Mearson here, Education Coordinator with Reach Out in Aberdeen. As you may have noticed, comfy shirt on, mug of tea, art studio, time for another art session. So today we're going to try something that hopefully you'll find quite meditative, quite calming. We're going to do a little bit of drawing and hopefully create a really pleasing looking optical illusion. Now this is not something I've ever tried before, I'm borrowing this idea from my friend Fiona who's an art teacher. And she made a little video um, making this piece of art and I found it really inspiring so I thought we'll give it a go today. So we are all in the same boat. This is not something that I've ever done before. So as we do it, if you're making this along with me, then we're on it together. Uh, mistakes and all, that's all part of the fun, isn't it? Let's face it. So what you'll need today, ideally, is a hand or a foot. If there's any issue with that in any way, then you can just draw it freehand, no pun intended, or you can borrow somebody else in your household or your family or a friend's hand and trace around that. Um, I think the concept of this, once you see it happening, you could maybe apply it to anything. We could actually have a little bit of fun with that later on in the video, in fact. My, my brain's off now in creativity mode, but we're gonna start with tracing our own hand. That's the beginning of this whole exercise. So for that, you're gonna need a good old pencil, and a good old art pad, piece of paper, cardboard, whatever you choose to render your art on. Once that's done, we're gonna use a little bit of color. You don't need to, you could use shades of gray if you're using pencils. You could use a light touch or a heavy touch with a pen if you're using just pens. But I'm choosing some nice colorful felt tips today. And I also have one nice fancy art pen, which I'll speak about later, which might come into play later on in the video. So that's our supplies sorted. All you're going to need yourselves is a nice comfortable art space. Just find a nice bit of peace, nice bit of calm wherever you're at. And let's get making some art. Hey folks, here we are, ready for action. I've got my pad laid out. Hopefully you can see it clearly. I've got my hand on the paper. And all I'm going to do is just simply trace around my hand. Now this is not something I've done since probably primary school days but what a pleasing activity isn't it good old tracing of a hand and I'm just using a pencil and a light sort of touch to get the shape look at that one hand now once you've got that shape laid down the exercise begins and it is just lots and lots of flowing lines this is the way to think about it now this is called contouring I believe and we simply draw a straight line across to the hand now this is the key once it touches the edge of the hand you do a bump and then you continue the straight line after it goes over a hand just like that and just space them out about maybe a few centimeters apart do a bump and let it flow off a page so you don't have to think about this too much it's just a straight line, bump, and then let it flow off a page. And you can just switch your brain off and just go with the flow. That's part of the beauty of making art, isn't it? And drawing. Just that little escape that you get. And uh, not too complicated either to wrap your head around. I think pencil drawing can be incredibly complicated and incredibly technical. Uh, I've seen people do pencil drawings that look like black and white photos uh, and that's just beyond my skill set. I've never been technically minded. I used to really like copying comic books when I was a kid but they were never quite right. I would uh, draw my favourite characters for 2000 AD but they... Oh no, I've hit a stumbling block here. And does this line fall over there? This line must... Oh, I see what I've done now. So I made a little mistake here. So what I'm going to do, and this is what it's all about, doing this live. I'm going to find a rubber. And I'm going to look at where I went slightly wrong now. And I will speak you through fixing this. Because you may have done the same, or you may have got it just right first time so we're going to rub off what we did now this is why we started this off with a pencil I think looking back Fiona knew exactly what she was doing so 
we're following our line, it's, it's hit the hand, it goes over here, it goes straight across here, and then it goes up a bump again, and then it goes off of there. There we go, we're back on it folks. No panic. Right, so our hand comes along. This is me chatting, I maybe should have put a bit more thought into it. It goes along there, we'll follow that line there, that'll go along to there, that'll go there, and then it'll flow off again. You see that? It's a straight line, there's a bump, a straight line, we'll do a bump, straight line, do a bump, straight line, yeah, I think we're on it now. And this is coming to life already, straight line to the edge, we'll do a bump, straight line, bump, straight line, a bump, just like that, now we've got a little bit of a flow. There we go, and you can sort of see that coming to life already. Now, I'm keen to hear when you guys are making art for yourselves, what you normally do. For me, it's painting, so I love a good old salvage bit of board and mountains of acrylic paint. That's my my go-to, but I do always have a sketch pad in a house and a sit and doodle. And that often leads to some of my, my favourite paintings that I've made. From one little part of a doodle, it kind of inspires me to go and lay some lines down on a board and then you're away for that. And it's really good as well to to always be practising keeping your hand in, as they say. There we go. Now, that's our outline done. Hopefully you can see that clearly. I'll lift up to the camera for Abdi. Right, so do you see that sort of coming to life a bit? Now, colour. So this is far we might diverge in the art that we're making. If you don't have felt temps or colour, you can use a, a, a much darker line, some lighter lines, some shading as you follow these contours, and that'll help it bring to life. And you'll get an idea once I use a pen. So it's just a case of following the lines we've done already. Good old blue felt tip. There we go. And remember, don't worry if it goes slightly wrong. You saw, you saw it going a bit skew with for me earlier, and it was easily fixed. And if you can't remedy it, just grab yourself another bit of paper and start again. Easy as that. As I always say, there's no rules to art. It doesn't matter if it goes slightly wrong. Sometimes the the best pieces of art kind of grow from mistakes or errors or things not quite going to plan. I think it's not healthy to get too caught up in everything being perfect because it never really is, is it? You can just find a sort of piece with it when you're making art and that's sometimes all you can get and that's part of being an artist I always think is uh, finding that balance between something being finished or destroying it and starting again completely. It's that uh, tightrope that you walk sometimes when you're creating stuff and it wouldn't have it any other way. Now, paper. I was going to mention paper now. I am terrible, I don't know about yourselves, for having some nice art supplies, for instance really nice drawing pads, really nice pens, and I never use them because they're so nice I don't want to mess them up. And it finds us, they sit in a cupboard or in my art box or my art studio for years and I've never used them. And uh, a friend of mine a few years ago said, quite simply, just use them, that's what they're for. There's no point in them lying about. So now I tend to, if I'm doing anything, and it requires a, a nicer bit of paper, I'm changing colour now. All we're doing is following what we did already. So I'm just going to put this underneath the blue line. Yeah, so now if I'm doing something that requires like a, a nice bit of paper, like this today, I use a nice bit of paper. So if you have, just crack it out of that cupboard. Don't worry about it. Equally with nice paints, don't let your paints sit for years and years as I used to do because they dry up and then you don't get good of them anyway. Now, there we go. And this is the meditative part, you can just lose yourself in this, you're just following your lines now. Simple as that. Now, using the wonders of technology. 
I am going to pause this video, jump ahead once I've done a few lines of colour, and then we'll continue with the rest of the exercise. So this is maybe the bit to put the kettle on. Now you've got now you've got a flavour for how this works, and just take your time, follow your lines, switch up brain off for a while. Now that's the purple lines done. Now we're going to add some same again. Some nice pink lines flowing through. Just like that. Use any colours you want. Hopefully you've got a nice flow to this now. And you can see it sort of coming to life a little bit. And just following the lines that you made already. Just like that. So, same concept. Along to the edge of the hand, do a little bump. Edge of the hand, a bump. Edge of the hand, a bump. And then just let it flow off. And you can see it coming to life a bit. Now I'm going to pause this again. Do a few more lines like this. And then we'll come back to the next part. Now, this is where I'm at just now. I added a few more colours, a few more lines. The next part, we're going to use a black pen. You can use a biro, you can use a felt tip if that's what you're using. I'm using one of my nice art pens, because as I said earlier, use your supplies. And uh, one line and I'm already hooked. So it's got a really nice rolling action on it and a really smooth line of ink look at that and this is just starting to pop a little bit now so i'm gonna do a bit more work in the hand just putting these black lines in just space them out maybe 10 across a hand and then we'll come back to finishing off now we're ready for the final finishing touches so this is the important bit here we're only working on the right hand side of each finger in the right hand side of the hand here. So you start at the top, we'll do it, do it like this so you can see. And just top the finger and just work down the edge of the finger and then put some little lines coming out. Just follow in the direction you're going in and then work doing a little bit again just to sort of blend it in. There you go, you see? This finger, same again, some little lines. Just follow the line of the hand down. Some little lines coming out. And I'll take this up to camera so you can see closer what I'm doing. And then some little lines just to blend it in again. All right, do you see what I did there? Right, I'm going to continue the rest of the hand. You can't go wrong with this as long as there's just a, a, a slight black outline and then I'll uh, come back to you. Now I've spent maybe five minutes or so just chipping away at this and I think we are done. Hopefully we've got something approximating a 3D hand. I think we do. Look at that. There we go. Now, I hope you enjoyed the exercise, folk. I found that very common, and uh, I'm really intrigued to see if that would work with other f initially flat objects. If you're feeling creative, give it a go, and let us see how your response is. Other than that, stay safe, folks. Get outside, get some fresh air, and look after yourselves. See you next session.